going on guys welcome back to the channel in today's video we're going to be talking about red shirting players i'm going to be giving you guys a guide as to how i go about red shirting players how many players you need to keep active at each position and how that can provide you some flexibility to red shirt players and how you can leverage red shirt players to help build your team over time so we're going to start a brand new dynasty with TCU kind of a middle end team I wanted to pick like a three-star team a team that probably actually has some genuine potential red shirt players and give you guys kind of a breakdown just step by step looking at who I would red shirt and like I said also telling you how many players you need to have active at each position which is going to give you the information you need for how many players you can red shirt beyond having those active players so if we go over to our team tab that's where we find our red shirts it is not going to prompt you to red shirt players there is no week to red shirt players like there was in the ncaa series back on ncaa 14 most recently and i've played that game very recently so i can see the contrast between this game and that game it is odd to me that they don't give you a prompt or a week that is dedicated to red shirting players i do like the flexibility however because it is more realistic you have a set number of weeks i believe it's up to week four to be able to red shirt your players and if you red shirt a player and then you end up playing that player then that red shirt drops off so you have some flexibility and some capability ability to do different things i just think it should still at some point prompt you to go red shirt players because some of you may not have even known that red shirting was really even something you could or should be doing within this game so we're going to go position by position this video might get a little bit long because of that but we're going to break it down pretty thoroughly so that you guys don't miss anything starting with the quarterback position you only really need to carry two active starting quarterbacks on your team so it's an interesting approach here that you could take with this position i like to have athletes at quarterback obviously this quarterback is going to potentially be your best option as a freshman 77 overall with 91 speed the only problem is he's the lowest overall player the other thing you have to think about whenever we're talking about red shirting players is the long-term health of your team and your ability to recruit I could redshirt this player, given that I have a sophomore and a junior in front of him, and allow him to build himself up. He'll get off-season progression before he can ever play. He will be a higher overall next year, maybe low 80s, and then he will have potentially four years of playing time on top of that to continue to progress. Whereas if I don't redshirt him now, I may potentially waste that season unless I'm going to play him right now. And if I do play him right now, then at the end of his career, he might not be as good as he could have been if we redshirted him. Because again, if you redshirt a player, you essentially get five years of progression or four if they leave early for the draft. Whereas if you do not redshirt that player, you get four years maximum, maybe three years if they leave for the draft. You'll still get those four playing years, but you get an extra year of them sitting the bench and progressing in the offseason, and that's really the key there. So what I would probably do if I'm trying to build TCU up long term is just straight up redshirt this freshman quarterback and then start him next year, regardless of what these two players do, unless one of them is really good and really pops up really you know goes high in terms of overall or does really well for me this gives me my two active starting quarterbacks now and for the long-term success of my team this guy is going to be able to build up higher overall and then that also means that i don't have to focus as much on scouting and recruiting an extra quarterback because i know that next year i'm probably going to have this guy be a junior i'm going to have this guy who's going to be a red shirt freshman and i doubt that the backup 79 overall quarterback is going to go anywhere so i'll have access to quarterbacks i won't really have to worry about scouting and recruiting them so that gives you some flexibility to spend points on other needs not that you should ignore that position but it gives you flexibility and then we come to the running back position. You should really carry three running backs. You can get away with two, actually. So a lot of teams are going to have a lot of flexibility here to red shirt players. Personally speaking, looking at this roster, I like to have a pretty athletic running back. I don't see a big difference between this senior, this sophomore, and this senior can't be red shirted at this point. I'm going to red shirt 
this guy. I'm going to redshirt this guy and redshirt this guy because that's going to give me a pretty similar player, a 80 overall. And both of these guys can't start. So I'm going to start the 80 overall. And then I have two 76 overall backups. Now, neither of these guys is that great, but they're not going to play that much over my starter. So that gives me my three starting running backs. And that, again, allows me to build up for the future. This guy's going to come in as a mid 80s player next year because of offseason progression. As a redshirt sophomore, he's going to have multiple years ahead of him. And these guys are going to go up into the 70s and they'll be acceptable backups. I don't have to do a whole lot of recruiting there for the running back position either. You do not need to have a fullback on the roster. I generally suggest not even carrying a fullback if you're a team that uses a fullback simply because tight ends can rotate into that fullback position and I believe so can running backs. So if you just have solid players at those positions, that's going to be more worthwhile to you. I think fullbacks go up to maybe four stars on the recruiting cycle. I've generally seen three stars it's not really worth your time recruiting fullbacks because you can just get better athletes, better players at running back or at tight end or at receiver and transition them over if you really want to have somebody listed as a fullback, but you don't have to, and that's key. You can just use guys that are listed at other positions. At wide receiver, you're generally going to want to carry somewhere around five to six receivers. You can get away with five. You're probably not going to be able to get away with four, but you can definitely get away with five. A lot of teams are going to want to carry six for depth and those types of things. And this is actually a pretty good example of a decision point that we have to make. So I'm seeing that we have a whole bunch of high overall receivers. We may want to start them all, but we may not be able to play every single one of those players. And we have a bunch of guys that have already red shirted and we have some solid freshmen coming in like a 93 speed player. What I'm probably going to do here is automatically red shirt these freshmen because they're going to be so comparable to all of these other receivers here that have already been red shirted that it's not going to make a difference. If this guy had like 99 speed or 98 speed or something then yeah I might be playing him and specifically using him as a deep threat player but in this case we don't really have to worry too much about that because we have one two three four five six seven eight players that are already locked into being on our roster and can't be redshirted but then that gives us a decision should we try to bring some of these guys back for another year next year because we have an 87 and 86 and 85 and an 80 and we have all these other guys too that are going to be able to play. We can't really get all of these guys significant enough reps. I don't see a whole lot of value in being able to carry four receivers like this, especially having played through dynasties, deep into dynasties, even with wear and tear and whatnot. I mean, you're going to have a 92 speed guy, you're going to have a 96 speed guy, and speed is king in this game still. It always is. And so those guys will be able to be just fine if you need to use them. So I'm thinking about red shirting one, if not two of these players, and then they're going to come back as even better seniors next year for us. I think what I would do personally is I would pick between these four receivers and I would pick two of them to red shirt. That way I know this year I'm going to have two mid to high 80s receivers and next year I'm going to automatically have two mid to high 80s receivers and I'm set up with kind of really good receivers to start for two years in a row while these other guys back here on the back end continue to develop up to that point. Depending on how you feel about your gameplay, I think that's where you kind of come in with that decision point. I would probably just red shirt these two guys because they're a little bit more athletic. I would always plan to be a little bit better in year two than in year one. And so I want my kind of speed receivers to be more accessible to me in year two than in year one. In year one, I can definitely get by with an 87 overall and an 86 overall receiver with 88 and 89 speed. We're not going to be absolutely lighting things up on verts or anything like that, but we're going to be doing just fine. That gives us two high overall guys and a ton of depth behind it. At tight end, you're going to want to make sure that you have four players active on your roster, not being redshirted. Here we have three, four, five players. Generally speaking, your bottom end players don't even have to be that good. They really just have to be bodies to come in for certain formations and whatnot. I generally suggest that you have one tight end over an 80. You can often transition receivers over to tight end and they can develop blocking skills actually pretty well through off season progression. This is a pretty easy decision point here. I already have all those tight ends. I have four tight ends above a 70, so I don't even have to think about it. These two can just be red shirted right off the bat. I mean, this guy's the only one with any speed, but 
I'm not going to be super hard pressed to play him right away. Again, we want to be better in year two generally than in year one. And so this guy is just going to get better and he might start for us next year based on his overall and the fact that this guy is a red shirt senior that is actually a decent overall currently. You also kind of got to think about somebody potentially playing at fullback. So, you know, that's why four tight ends is crucial. Sometimes you'll have a three tight end set. Sometimes you have a two tight end set with a fullback and those types of things. So you have to have some flexibility in order to fill out those, you know, positions whenever those formations or situations do come up. Across the offensive line, I recommend having roughly two players active at every single offensive line position. You can get away with having five starters across the offensive line and two to four backups across the offensive line if you really want to, especially if you struggle with building depth off the offensive line through recruiting. But what's usually a pretty good strategy is if you have a high overall player like this that's a sophomore, I'm going to redshirt him because he's not going to start, right? You're going to have a, an offensive lineman that's starting here, and then you can have the lowest overall player be his backup. And so in year one, I'm going to redshirt these two guys. Then this guy's going to come in and be the starter next year and be really good. This guy's going to be a serviceable backup. And guess what? I can then redshirt this player and allow him more time to continue to develop in year two. So again, you have a pretty solid serviceable starter and then a you know, whatever backup behind there, just a body more than anything. I have three left guards here that can't be red shirted. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I go to my other positions. I'm going to red shirt this backup center because one of these guards is going to be able to be a decent enough backup center given there's three guards there. I can save this guy. That way he can be a really solid starter for me next year. At right guard, pretty easy decision here. We already have two guys, a solid starter kind of middle end backup we can redshirt this freshman and allow him to get better for next year and at right tackle we're looking at the same exact situation so redshirt that guy and move on now we have a starter a solid starter at each position and you know average backups in behind bodies more than anything that can plug and play if somebody goes down with an injury you need two players at each defensive end position that's generally the way that i like to run it so pretty simple decision here we have three ready to play we're going to redshirt the freshman. At right end, we have two ready to play, plus those three at left end. They can kind of transition back and forth. So we're just going to redshirt the two other players that we don't need that are a lower overall than those guys that are already playing. D tackle position, you generally want to have four defensive tackles. So it's actually interesting that I only have three here. This is going to be an area that I'm going to have to hit hard in recruiting. I'm going to go back to my defensive end positions and see if some of these guys could potentially help us out on the D tackle spot on the depth chart. And I'm sure that one of these guys at least is going to be capable of that. So if I'm kind of adding these guys up as a whole, I have five defensive ends and three D tackles. So that adds up to the same number. I'm going to leave this defensive tackle here. He's not going to get much better going into next year. It's just going to be one of those situations where I need the bodies on the defensive line. I would rather redshirt the fresh 71 overall so that he's better in the long run same thing on this end so you know you have to kind of make a decision there but again you would like to have two defensive ends at each position and four d tackles i'm gonna have to recruit d line pretty hard in order to kind of fill in my depth there and help to build the team up as we continue to develop at both outside linebacker positions you're gonna want to have two players now again outside backers and middle backers are kind of interchangeable depending on what your defense looks like and so you can kind of get away with maybe having five five middle linebackers and one outside backer at one of the positions or something like that. But I have two here that can play. There's a very similar situation here between this outside backer and the senior outside backer, similar overall, similar skill sets. So I'm going to redshirt this guy and have access to him next year because I don't need him. Both of these outside backers can't play at the same position. I will look at the other side and make a decision. I can get away with a 76 in year one. We're going to automatically redshirt the extra player here. Again, we only need two. What I could do if I really wanted to is start one of these outside backers at one side and start one at the other. I just don't see it as necessary because the 76 overall is going to be good enough. 
and then that allows us to have some flexibility in the long run. At middle backer, again, generally, I'm going to say you want four players. It depends on your defense for sure, especially if you're a 4-3 versus a 3-4 versus a 3-3 stack. It depends a little bit, but I'm typically going to leave these four middle linebackers here. I might look a little bit between the other players that I'm potentially redshirting and see if I should redshirt one over another. In fact, I have three right outside backers. One of them can be a solid backup middle backer. So I'm going to redshirt this sophomore. He's a younger guy. He could use some development. He's not going to play much over the 78 and the 79. We have that extra right outside backer that can be depth here if we really need a body. And so I'm comfortable just letting these guys be the starters. If, say, I was a 3-4 defense, and then this is the depth, and that outside backer is the depth, that's not a problem at all. At cornerback, you are very similar to the receiver position where you'd like to have five you might be able to get away with four but typically you're going to want five now a lot of people say you might want to carry six similar to the receiver position but i've never seen a sixth cornerback really get on the field in madden or this game or ncaa for that matter i typically suggest you keep five corners ready to go on your roster and red shirt everybody else this is a total decision point here as far as what we want to do. We're not going to start 70 overalls. This is a freshman and a sophomore, so they're really good candidates to redshirt and allow them to develop in the long run. Now I'm going to look at these guys. We have six players to pick from. I'm just going to decide on one player to redshirt. I don't really feel like redshirting a senior is going to be that big of a deal, especially when you consider these guys are fairly similar in overall. I'm not going to come away with high-end corners if I redshirt anybody. This is honestly a toss-up. I would probably redshirt the younger of one of these players. I'm going to redshirt maybe a junior, and so I'm going to compare those juniors. Well, who has the potential to be a solid starter for me next year if I'm not redshirting these seniors? Well, Jordan here as a 78 overall probably has the best chances. And if these guys are starting on the outside, the best that this guy can do is start in the slot. I can get away with a slightly lower overall player in the slot. This allows me to have this guy a little bit more ready to go for next year and potentially get an extra year out of him in playing time. You're generally going to want to have two players at each safety position, and this is typically a position like the offensive line where I like to have one good starter and the backup can be just about anything. Typically, I prefer that they're athletic at the very least, but this is another really solid situation. I have a good starter. I have a, a backup that has no choice but to be on the roster so I'm going to redshirt the other players because these guys will be set up for me for next season as additionally better players at the strong safety position we have another decision to make do we want to start the senior or can we get away with a 77 overall junior to set ourselves up with a better roster next year I don't know that I necessarily like this because this guy's got 85 speed. So I think I am going to, in this situation, a little bit different from the other positions I've done, I'm going to keep this guy and play this senior because of that speed. I'm going to probably recruit safeties to try to get a little bit more athletic on the back end of the secondary. I'm going to, of course, redshirt the other two safeties because they are simply not needed on the roster. And then this gives me a good starter for this year. And then I have to kind of figure things out as I go from there probably Jamel Johnson going to be the starter next year because he's a little bit more athletic and he'll have time to develop and he's younger. He'll be able to have a better career here for the team. At kicker and punter, you need one player on both sides. This is, again, a decision point for you. A lot of times I end up with a couple kickers and punters and I just try to redshirt them as long as possible to keep them as good for as long as possible. That way I don't have to worry about it so much in recruiting. I know a lot of teams come in with solid kickers and punters. This is a situation where this guy's a low overall, but he has 85 kick power, 75 kick accuracy. It's not that big of a difference between these two players. And the overall is kind of saying differently, probably because of their awareness difference. I'm going to redshirt that senior because I can get away with kicking with the 62 overall with that kick power and that kick accuracy. 
it's not an important enough aspect of college football 25 for me to just let this guy play and walk out the door and continue to develop this guy. This guy will come along after this guy's ready to go, and I don't need to ki recruit a kicker because that kicker's fine. At punter, nothing we can do here. We're only one player, so we're going to leave it as is. And there you have it. That's the entire process that I go through in order to redshirt players. There are quite a few redshirt players here that were essentially setting up for development for the future. You can redshirt shirt probably about half of your roster every dynasty that you get into you would be surprised how many players you can get away with red shirting and it will set you up for success in the long run in dynasty it is definitely something you don't want to overlook and it is easily overlooked in college football 25 because there's no notification there's no prompt to tell you to go do it and you know it doesn't even really say the time frame and those types of things so make sure you are red shirting players and setting yourself up for success if you do care about the long-term strategy of your dynasty and team building the only additional comment that i'll make is that red shirting can put you into a difficult position if you are utilizing the recruiting strategies to get a full recruiting class because if you are red shirting a lot of players you're going to end up with a very full roster as you continue to build your dynasty. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a good problem to have, but you need to make sure that your recruits coming in are good enough to overtake some of the lower end roster players because you cannot force cut a brand new recruit. They have to play for your team for a year. So that creates a problem where you could end up with a bad recruit, say a 60 overall, and you have to cut some 75 or 78 or 80 overall player because you simply have too many players on the roster. So definitely something to be aware of. Maybe don't red shirt too many players if you know you're going to be really successful in recruiting. If you're coming in as a top end team with really good players, you might not even need to red shirt a whole lot of players because your development is not going to be that much of a big deal because you're getting five-star and four-star prospects that are coming in as 75 plus overall players right off the bat so definitely changes a little bit team by team so keep those factors in mind as you go along but at least now you know how to do it how i would do it what your position minimums really need to be for you to run a team in dynasty mode in college football 25 and you know i hope that you guys enjoyed this information or found this information useful if you did leave a like down below comment down below i'd like to hear what you guys are thinking about the game at this point in the life cycle of the game i know that you know kind of the freshness of the game has worn off for a lot of people and i have friends on both sides that are saying different things i have friends saying that it plays like madden i have friends saying that this game's amazing i have people that like it people that don't like it and they're both in my ears so i i'm still in the camp that i firmly like this game i feel like there are are some things that are missing for sure and that could be done better i hope that they continue to build upon the frame of this game but uh i really do think it's solid still and i'm curious to see at this point playing college football 25 what you guys are feeling like uh let me know that down in the comment section below let me know what you guys do with red shirting your players i'm curious to see if anybody else has a different stance on it so leave that feedback down below like comment subscribe as always i'll see you in the next video and i hope you guys have a good one